Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all have been safe and sound during my absence on the channel, but I'm back, Madridistas, rejuvenated for the upcoming season. And in today's video, we would be discussing how Spain and Italy managed to book their place in the semi-finals. We'll talk about the happenings of both the matches. It was another entertaining day, which almost saw another major upset. The Switzerland side, after knocking out France in the round of 16, came close to another giant killing moment, but they just fell short in the end. Starting by having a look at the lineup, Spain set up in the 4-3-3, Switzerland on paper set up in the 3-4-3 formation, but as you can see here, without the ball, Swiss set up in the 4-2-3-1, and we saw this formation right through the early moments of the game. Spain, as usual, had a lot of possession, Busquets, Pedri, and Coque were pulling the strings in the middle, Spain were trying to dominate, and Swiss being the underdogs, understandably, were trying to keep the defensive shape. They kept narrow, they were not willing to give any space to Spain in the central areas, the two defensive midfielders sitting in front of the defense were always going to make it difficult for Spain to attack through the center and as a result Spain used the tactics of stretching Switzerland on the wings. The midfielders of Spain attempted to get the ball to Saravia and Ferran Torres who were stationed on either flanks. They found the through through short balls or through long balls. They chose to go wide and whenever the two had the opportunity they were looking to put in some good crosses into the penalty box. Alvaro Morata was lurking in the center and they did manage to create some nervy moments for Switzerland as well. Now we know that Spain got the lead through Jordi Alba, the cross from Coque fell for Jordi Alba who took a shot from outside the box, there was a big deflection which wrong footed Jan Sommers and Spain did get the early advantage. But credit to Switzerland, they stayed calm after that early blow, maintaining the structure of the team was a priority and they did have their moments as well. The Spanish defence was maintaining a high back line, there were times when Switzerland were able to get the ball over the high defensive line, they used to chip the ball over the defence to find the man making a run in behind. But often those runs were not timed well and we saw many times Switzerland were caught offside. But talking about the first half in general, Spain had more control, there were some good moments, some intricate passing, however when it came to chances creation, Spain were not firing on all cylinders on that front. The defending at times was questionable as well which we did see getting exposed in the second half. They were especially troubled from the corners, Shakiri had put in some dangerous crosses but Switzerland were missing the end product but we have to remember Switzerland were in the quarterfinals after knocking out the world champions and at some level they maintained their belief. They showed character, they knew they would get a few chances and finally in the 68th minute they got an absolute gift from the Spanish centre-backs. There was a turnover of position in the centre of the pitch and Switzerland tried to attack Spain with intent. There was a chip pass which was looking to find Frula, however Laporte got to the ball first but in the end it turned out to be a horrible mix-up between Pau Torres and Imeric Laporte and Frula and Shakiri combined there to make things level. It was shocking for Spain, heavenly for Switzerland and we could see the Swiss scam had started to believe once again. The possibility of reaching the semi-final was there in front of them and you could see there was a spring in the steps of the Swiss players. They were going toe to toe with Spain, they were putting in the challenges which almost frustrated the Spanish players but in the 77th minute there was another turning point, Frula gets sent off for a rash challenge and it felt at that stage that now Spain would switch gears, use the numerical advantage and possibly get over the line but they couldn't manage that in the 90 minutes, they couldn't manage that even in the next 30 minutes of extra time and as the penalty dawned upon us, Switzerland were again in a great position to go to the semi-finals. It would have been a historic moment, a wild one had Switzerland gone through, Jan Sommers he had a magnificent game once again, he was single-handedly keeping the Swiss in contention, he came up with some big saves but unfortunately his teammates were wasteful from the penalty spot and Spain just managed to hang on. Oyan Zabal knocked home the match-winning penalty and the scenes were jubilant for Spain, heartbreaking for Switzerland but they can take great pride in the run they had. It was a gutsy effort, it showed the character of the team and they went out fighting against a European powerhouse. So those were my thoughts on the first game of the day but if we go to the mega clash between Italy and Belgium, we all had our eyes on this one, it was a fascinating tie and it certainly lived up to the billing. The first 45 minutes especially, I thought it was a very good half of football, we had an entertaining start, Bonucci had an offside goal chalked off, Kevin De Bruyne was looking in inspired 
tight form. There were some question marks regarding his fitness before the match, but the way he was charging forward, taking on his man in one-on-one -on -one situations, that indicated he was 100% ready for the game, and he came very close to scoring as well. He had a shot in the 22nd minute which looked bound for glory, but Donnarumma, he certainly had some other ideas there. But talking about the team that really dominated the first half, it was the Italian team which had the upper hand. They had more of the possession, they looked more threatening going forward, they were the team winning the tactical battles, and it was an impressive showing from the Azuris. Now if we have a look at the lineup on paper, they set up in the 4-3-3, but definitely, that's not how the Italians played. Spinazzola, as we have seen in this tournament, he was an important attacking outlet. He was the man occupying the spaces on the left wing. He's a quick-footed player and he caused some trouble for the Belgian side, but this gave Lorenzo Insigne a lot of freedom. He was drifting inside, he was there playing as a false nine at times, he was there on the right, he was there on the left, he was there in the center. Overall, it looked like he was really enjoying the game, and talking about the goal he scored, it was an absolute belter. It was an amazing goal, a goal from the top draw, he skipped past Tielemann, had a crack at goal, it had the power, it had the curl, it had the precision, it was an absolutely mesmerizing goal, and when Kotwa is beaten from that distance, you know the goal was a special one. And at this point, it looked like the Italians were going to go through, Barella had also scored the opening goal, and it looked like Italy would go into halftime with the two-goal cushion. But moments before the halftime whistle, Doku won a penalty for Belgium, Romelu Lukaku did his job from the penalty spot, and it was game on when the referee blew the halftime whistle. And as I said earlier, it was an enthralling, exhilarating, and action-packed half of football. And coming to the second half, we didn't get any goal, but the atmosphere was tense. Belgium did create a few chances. Kevin De Bruyne created a chance for Lukaku. Doku, who was a surprise inclusion in the side, he looked impressive on the night. And at times, we did get to see end-to-end -end football. But this Italian side is known for the defensive prowess. They looked disciplined. They maintained the shape. They maintained the 4-4-2 without the ball. They were solid at the back, got the job done, knocking out the golden generation of Belgium. And unfortunately, Eden Hazard once again had the best view from the sidelines. But that now leaves us with Italy and Spain in the semi-finals. The two European giants will go up against each other. And judging on yesterday's performance, I think Italy are looking much more solid as a team. They are responding to the tactics of the coach. They are solid at the back. They can play entertaining football as well. So keep an eye on Italy. They may just go all the way. The coach Roberto Mancini has done a good job with the Italian side. And Spain really need to pick up the socks for this intriguing encounter. So those were my thoughts from the two games that we witnessed. It was an entertaining day of football. And now it's your turn to let me know what did you think about the two games that were played yesterday. Do you think the Italians have what it takes to lift the Euros this summer? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you soon. Till then, take care. And I'll see you with another match review tomorrow.